Early morning today. It's about uh, 7.45 right now in the morning. We just did about a two hour drive here. Don't know why. We decided to come out today. We're expecting 75 millimeters of rain or seven and a half centimeters, which is pretty crazy. Um, first thing we noticed when we got to the spot is this area here. And if you take a look, this is an area we've done a lot of exposing on. I dug some holes here the other day and exposed an ore body 10 meters wide, one and a half meters in length. It's exposed this way. Uh, you got an ore body of basically massive calcopyrite. A little bit of pyrite, a little bit of arsenopyrite. But what we did is the other day um, we sort of dug this out at the end here because it was overflowing onto the road and now it's washing through all this bedrock so when this actually clears up we'll be able to take a look and see if it's exposed anything more on the bedrock normally this doesn't flow at all so basically this is an area we're going to go look at today we have some new claims in the area and we're going to um, we're going to take a look at those today. we got four new cells, so let's head up there and see what we find. Before we head out, we just wanted to hammer a few chunks off this bedrock here. Just to show you guys, you can see the quartz in there. Calcopyrite and pyrite mix. Here's a few of the pieces we just chunked off. Kind of difficult to see because of the rainwater, but you can see some malachite in there. We're gonna try and get this piece off right now. We'll hammer a few of these. See there. You can see the malachite and Calcopyrite. So that's the stuff from the ore body. Solid mass. Let's get this big hunk out and then we'll go check out our new claims. Another piece here. So, that's that showing. So we got this little quarry here, and you can see how everything is so oxidized. We're looking at the same rock type as you see down on that main road where we found three zones, which are the primary zones of mineralization. Um, a couple of drill holes were popped in one and they intersected a nice 1.32 meter wide vein. What we're looking at is pretty much exactly the same kind of material you see in the area when you dig down. So you can see how gaussinous this is, this limonite. And uh, you can see some mineralization right there. A lot of this rock is deteriorated and that's just because of the breakdown of your iron sulfides, which is primarily pyrite in this area. There is loads of gaussinous rock here and uh, because of new logging, they exposed a lot of it, so we are on it. Just a short distance away from where the little quarry is. 
can see more bedrock exposed here and it's also gossiness. I can see disseminated pyrite. So yeah, you can see all that pyrite right there. It's more in clusters. All, all the areas where you have your yellowish staining from your your sulfur and your sulfides is where you primarily see most of the mineralization. You can see all this right here is iron pyrite. And the significance of this stuff is generally this is what you see down on the road and it's in the vicinity of mineralized showings which are high grade. So that's what we're looking for today. If you line up one of the zones we're actually pretty straight on this. So most likely this is part of the same zone. You can see all the deteriorated pyrite along here. So it looks like there's a vein of some sort here. Again, still no sulfides other than iron pyrite. So you can see, again, more pyrite. You can see all this deteriorated grayish stuff here, which is looking like, uh, almost like deteriorated quartz. And that's kind of similar to uh, what you see down on the road, there's giant, giant gray silicus like quartz veins. Slightly porphyritic as well. You can see the, the phenocrests in there. So this is going to take a lot of exposing, so we'll just move on for now and see what else we can find before we get totally soaked. And again, we won't spend too much time here, I don't think, but you also have similar gray silicus rock with some oxidized material on the outside. You can see more of your yellowish staining from your iron sulfides and your oxide staining here. We've literally come across dozens and dozens of these areas of Gawson. We're not going to stop at every single one, just some of the larger ones. See if there's anything that's notable or visible at surface. So Gawson is also called iron cap, so basically you'll have your weather deposit on the surface. And if you were to dig down or drill down is where you'd find the actual deposit or the primary deposit and uh, Gawson can be from one meter to a hundred meters thick before you actually hit the major deposit but we know there is some nice major deposits showing down on the road so we're about 200 meters above that area right now and we're just hoping something's popping at surface here so it's snowing up there that's about 300 meters higher than we are right now so we won't be able to head up there but we're in a nice large zone it's right from just around the corner all the way over to here about I'd say 75 meters wide and you can see the massive goss in here Obviously there's going to be more mineral close to surface here. You can see your gray silicus quartz like rock here. And it looks like there's some uh, 
contacts here of Kermuts and Volcanics. And we have a bingo. If you take a look at this, you can see in there, you can see the pyrite and a bit of sphalerite. So obviously your uh, more mineralized zone is closer to surface here. And this would be a lot easier to do some trenching on or drilling on as you're gonna be closer to the deposit. So here's a couple pieces. You can see the, the greenish tinge right there. That's from uh, epidotization of the rock. And there's your iron pyrite with a bit of sphalerite. Lots of iron pyrite. Probably not the best place to stand. Lots of deteriorating rock here. I found a little seam which I hammered out and you can see Sval right there. This is basically solid iron pyrite with a little bit of quartz in there and quartz carbonate. No doubt these will show some values of zinc. More sphalerite and pyrite. Pulled these samples from right there. Alright, so this is the last spot we're going to stop at for this video. You have your last goss in this area. A little bit of a shear right there. And last time we drove by here, we noticed that on the other side you have a different kind of rock. A basalt and slightly granitic rock so obviously there's a creek up here so maybe this is a fault or at least a rock contact so who knows what's in the creek we'll have to check that when the water is a bit lower you can see there's your granite so yeah this looks like basalt to all this rock here and you do have some granitic rock, but it's got rounded edges, so it's most likely made its way in its float material from up there. Come uh, summertime, we're definitely going to have to go up here. There's a raging waterfall up there. So it'd be nice to climb up that and check out the bedrock. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and it is time for us to get out of the rain. Take care, and Happy New Year. Time to head out now.